Welcome to MarcusG.TV. I'm Chef Marcus Giuliano. I'm a chef on a mission. Today's mission is uh, beef. So I had a conversation with a guest the other day, and uh, they were talking about, oh, we get this, this great grass-fed, pasture-raised beef at this restaurant, you know, that we go to, and, and you know, and can you, can, can you get this, uh, this brand of beef? And they told me the brand. I said, well, yes, I know that brand very well, but it's not grass-fed. They go, what do you mean it's not grass We were told that this, it's pasture-raised. I said, well, yes, you're right. The beef is indeed pasture-raised. The cattle live out on pastures as opposed to being uh, locked in the feedlots. However, this particular brand and a lot of other brands actually supplement grain in the animal's diet. And they said, really? We, we just assumed because it said pasture-raised that it's... That, that there's no other, you know, that they're eating 100% grass. They're eating the grass that's out in the pasture. So this is, this is tricky. This is sort of like, I don't want to say it's deception and fraud, but it's really a company, and a lot of companies do this. Um, a classic one is uh, I saw a grocery store a couple years ago that listed it under their salmon, ocean-raised salmon, right? Ocean-raised salmon. Think, oh, it's ocean-raised, right? Well, it's farm-raised in the ocean. Where else do you really farm salmon? You farm raised salmon typically in an ocean unless you're doing a closed containment system, which only a small number of, I, mean, I think maybe one, I know one farm is doing that. Um, so, yeah, the salmon are out in the ocean, and that's where they're raising them. It doesn't mean that they're wild salmon, and they were, people were assuming that, well, this is wild salmon because it's from the ocean. Same thing with when it comes to beef. Just because it's pasture raised doesn't mean it's grass fed. The farm, the co-op, whatever it is, will typically supplement grain into the animal's diet. What you're looking for is you're looking for the word grass-fed, grass-finished. That's what you're actually looking for on a package, on a label, in the description. Grass-fed, grass-finished. Um, now, according to the USDA and the American Grass-Fed Association, the animals have to exclusively eat foraged items out on pasture, okay? So this excludes any supplementing any grain and things like that. So you can go to the USDA's website, you can go to American Grass-Fed Association. They're great people over at the American Grass-Fed Association. Um, and uh, they're the ones who keep tight standards on the definitions, okay? So pasture-raised versus grass-fed, that's the rundown. Now, you can't have pasture-raised. It is 100% grass-fed, but you're, again, you have to look for pasture-raised. Um, and you have to look for the words that say grass-fed, grass -fed finished beef. Um, a lot of chefs are very confused and a lot of people are very confused because most, well, most all cattle start out on grass. So they live a certain amount of their life on grass. However, the last 90 days, 150 days, whatever, the animals are put onto grain. So they get off the grass pastures and because chefs be, assume because, well, the animal ate grass at one point in its life, the animal's grass fed. As soon as you start feeding the animal grain, you can no longer call it grass-fed. And there's lots of different issues of why people are after grass-fed. Um, a lot of people like the flavor of the gra of grass-fed beef. It has a more distinctive, I don't want to say gamey, but more pronounced, more distinctive flavor. Um, so that's one thing. The omega-3s are much more in balance versus higher omega-6s and 9s because the grain um, adds... The, bat, the, the fats, the, the sixes and nines, the ones you want to avoid, you don't want to avoid it, but you, the ones you want in less quantities, that uh, screws up the ratio of those fats in the, in the meat you're eating. So it's not predominantly omega-3 anymore, it's predominantly omega-6s and nines. Um, another thing is um, sustainability. Of course, it takes more land to produce, uh, to produce uh, grass-fed grass cattle. However, if you account in all the grain, that, uh, all the land that goes and makes the grain and all the water and the transportation, the grain-fed beef is actually more taxing on our environment. So there's more downfalls of the environment, more methane gases, um, so th uh, uh, things like that, more excrement from the, from the farm uh, that, that needs to go somewhere, especially once you start putting the cattle inside feedlots. The cattle actually can live in their manure because there's manure everywhere. Um, typical big feedlot operations like IVP, Excel, Montford, they'll take a, a five-mile square area feedlot that's just brown, <laughs> brown dirt and excrement, and you know that's where the cattle that's where the cattle live for literally the last three, four, five months of their life. At one point, ten years ago, companies were saying grass, uh, grain fed, grain finished for a year. I mean that was a big thing. Grain finished for a year, you know, to get the animal really fat. Well. 
going back to, to these feedlot sizes, in a five-mile square area, you can actually pack almost 250,000 cattle in five square miles. That's what they do to it. So once you introduce grain into the animal's diet, you're also going to have more, the immune system's uh, going to weaken in the animal. That's when they need antibiotics and, of course, you know, uh, the whole plethora of things, hormones, just, it, it, it just goes on and on. So that was, that's the difference between pasture-raised and grass-fed. Um, a lot of chefs and restaurants are now serving true grass-fed. A lot of farmers out there are really doing the right thing and doing grass-fed. Uh, you can find it in farmer's markets. You can even find it in, in grocery stores, too, and like big grocery stores here in the Northeast. Um, ShopRite will even have grass-fed beef. Um, uh, mostly, they have mostly grain, but you have to look for where the grass-fed beef specifically is. In places like Whole Foods across the country, uh, pride themselves in especially sourcing local beef and having local grass-fed beef. But I remember as a chef uh, in the mid-90s, late 90s, it was hard for um, the marketing of grass-fed. Nobody wanted grass-fed beef back then. I don't want to say nobody, but not many people actually wanted grass-fed beef back then. Um, it had a stigma to it. Um, and it still does with a, with a lot of uh, a lot of people, especially the big steakhouses. You know, they want their highly marbleized, very high fat content beef. Um, so for them, you know, a grass fed steak is not really what they're after. But it had a big stigma, um, you know. And, and farmers were just frustrated. They're like, I don't know what to do with these cattle. I'm going to just auction them off to somebody who's going to finish them with grain and not have to worry about trying to market the cattle myself because there was not really not much of a market back then. But that has really uh, turned tides now. Um, especially with the, all the health claims and health benefits of grass-fed beef and all these doctors uh, that are pushing grass-fed beef or recommending grass-fed beef uh, to, their, to their patients and on their websites and in their books and, of course, the paleo diet. Um, so that's the difference between pa uh, pasture-raised and grass-fed. You cannot assume that all pasture-raised cattle are grass-fed. I'm Chef Marcus Giuliano. Thanks for watching this video. If you like my videos, please hit like, uh, subscribe to my channel, and uh, pass it on. Thank you very much.